guys for today's first impression I'm trying out a new foundation and this is a Maybelline Dream Velvet foundation and this is what it looks like so I purchased this in the shade ivory and I think they have six different shades over here in the UK and in the US they have 12 different shades and I purchased ivory because I'm pretty much always ivory and then I think they had a natural ivory which was one lighter but it looked very pink and I don't have a pink undertone I have a neutral undertone so that's why I decided to purchase this one and I haven't actually tried this one out as you can see it still has the little cap on the top there. So I was very intrigued when I saw this on the Boots website and also I saw so many different haul videos of this foundation and Casey Holmes pretty much said that she loves this and I have a very oily t-zone and she has super oily skin and if she loves it I thought that I would give it a go and see if I like it as well. This retails for £7.99 in Boots and Superdrug and I believe that at Boots at the moment they do have all of their Maybelline products for buy one get one half price so if you want to get two of these you'll get a very good deal. And it says on the website pigments wrapped in a velvet shield for a soft matte finish and natural looking coverage a refreshing gel with two times more water versus dream satin liquid skin looks fresh and feels hydrated for 12 hours our first hydrating matte foundation for 100% velvet smooth perfection so hopefully this is going to work really really well on my oily t-zone and on the bag it says tested under dermatological control non-comedogenic and suitable for sensitive skin now i have a super super sensitive skin so hopefully this won't break me out and it'll look nice on my skin as well so as you can see i do have have a lot of redness on my skin I do have a couple of blemishes on my chin that you can't really see but the main thing that worries me about my skin is the redness I have a lot of it I did also purchase the dream blender that Maybelline came out with and they said this was a great thing to apply your foundation with I'm not going to try this for my foundation I think I'm going to try this for my concealer because as you can see it's absolutely tiny and it's going to take ages to get all my foundation on my skin so I'm going to use my Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge and as you can see there is a giant difference so I've already moisturised my skin and also I've primed this side of my skin using my Rimmel Stay Matte Primer which is a primer that I use for all of my foundations and I use it pretty much every single day and it keeps me really nice and matte. So I'm going to see if this foundation can work with the primer and also without the primer as well. I'm going to apply this foundation to one side of my face with my Real Techniques sponge. This way we can see a comparison and see if it covers up all my redness and my blemishes. And I don't know what the consistency of this is going to be like. And I also don't know what the coverage is. I think it's probably going to be a medium coverage foundation. So we'll see how it goes and see if it matches. So I've just put a little bit on. That's how much I've put on my sponge because it is pretty thick it's a very thick consistency it reminds me of the Kat Von D tattoo foundation and we're gonna go ahead and put it on one side of my face so I'm just gonna be popping this on different sections of my face it really reminds me of the dream matte foundation that Maybelline came out with a couple of years ago I used to use that all of the time I was pretty much obsessed with it but the only problem was it really broke me out I think I was about 15 when I started using it and it just did not look good on my skin after a while my skin was just covered in blemishes but it did cover up very very well and then it started to look a little bit cakey because at the time I did have really dry skin okay so just get under the nose so this is what the foundation looks like on one side of my face and I have to say I am pretty impressed with the coverage of this it is a medium coverage you can still see the redness coming through on my cheeks here and on my chin it's starting to look a little bit cakey I think this is one of those foundations where you have to work very very quickly with it and also one that you can't build up with the coverage because I have a feeling that if I put a little bit more of this on it is going to go very very cakey and it's something that I don't like so I'm going to go ahead and do the other side of my face and then I'm going to show you what it looks like so this is what the foundation looks like on my skin and I have to say the first thing is you really need to work very very quickly with this foundation I had to take off all of my foundation and restart it I had to put my primer back on half of my face put on my moisturizer as well and then redo my whole foundation because it just looked like a serious cake fest you can only do this foundation section by section and yeah you really need to work very very quickly with this foundation and you have to make sure that you don't go over what you've just done so I started off by doing this side of my cheek and I made sure that the majority of the redness was covered up. I didn't go over it too much and I didn't apply a lot of foundation on there as well. It does look very flawless from really far away as well, which I do have to say. And also the colour 
does match very well as well. It is slightly darker, but I will be fixing that with a little bit of concealer. So we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to do the rest of my makeup and I'm going to come back and show you what it looks like. So I'm back from doing my makeup and I did my makeup about an hour ago and I have to say I really do like this foundation. At first I really didn't like it. It looked very cakey and I wasn't really impressed in it. So I took all the foundation off and after I did it again, it looks a lot better. Now that I've applied my concealer and my highlighter and things like that, it does look a lot better. The thing I do have to say is that it is accentuating my pores quite a lot. So if you do have very large pores, this probably isn't going to be the best foundation for you. But I could just use a pore filling primer, which I didn't use today because I wanted to see how long it's going to last on my skin. But yeah, at the moment I am impressed. It looks a little bit strange with my highlighter on there. The highlighter doesn't look as good as it normally does, but I think it's just because I'm getting used to this new foundation. So it's now 12.51 and I'm going to come back in a couple of hours and show you what it looks like. Hi guys, so I'm back and it's now half past four in the evening. So I've had this foundation on for four hours because I did originally put it on at half past 12. And I'm ready to do my quick little update now for you. So I'm just going to see how the foundation is doing. It does look pretty good. It doesn't really look blotchy at all. I do have one section right here on my chin where I have absolutely no product on here. And on my nose it looks a little bit cakey and in between my eyebrows it looks extremely cakey so I think I'm probably going to have to sort that out. It does look patchy on this cheek as well. I don't actually have any foundation on around here which has not done very good because I've had very high hopes for this foundation. So I've just set my foundation using my Rimmel Stay Matte Powder. This is something that I use all the time with every single foundation that I have if I start to get oily. Now I noticed that my skin was very very oily and it was getting very shiny as well so I thought I'd use this just to keep it a little bit more matte and like I said I use this with every single foundation so it's not going to keep the foundation on any longer. It's just going to keep me a little bit more matte and because it is a transparent powder there's going to be no extra colour on top of it so so it's not going to change the colour of this foundation either and like I said it probably won't keep it on longer but it's just going to keep me a little bit more matte. So I've had this foundation on now for four hours and I'm going to come back in a couple of hours to let you know my final first impression review and if I like this foundation and what it looks like as well. So I'll see you in a couple of hours guys. Hi guys, so I'm back and it's now 6 minutes past 8 in the evening so I've had this foundation on for almost 8 hours now and I feel like now would be a great time for me to give you my final first impression review and also we're just going to see what it looks like at the 8 hour mark. So this is what the foundation looks like up close after 8 hours of wear and you could probably already see the redness on my face when I was zoomed out a little bit more but yeah, I pretty much don't have any product down the bridge of my nose and underneath here and my chin doesn't really have much product on there and you can see a little bit of a blemish and also right here you can see a blemish peeking through but like I said with my forehead it just it's very strange because it's just random blotches that have come off it's not a lot of patches that have come off it's just really tiny ones so I do feel like that this part is probably pretty wearable and um, my eyeshadow stayed on my blush has pretty much stayed on as well and also my highlighter which is pretty good but like I said before the blotches around here are still visible you can still see the blotches right around here which is a little bit annoying for me but to be honest I think it's done pretty good for eight hours of wear so now I'm going to look at the claims of this foundation and there's not many claims there's only three that it has the first one is that it keeps your skin feeling hydrated for 12 hours also that it's a matte foundation and that you get 100% velvet smooth perfection so I don't agree that it is matte it's sort of like a demi matte, it feels dewy in certain areas, it didn't keep me matte throughout the whole day, I did have to set with my Rimmel Stay Matte Powder for it to feel a little bit matte, and it stayed matte for I think about two hours in the morning and then when I repowdered about two hours after that so it wasn't really too bad. And when it says that your skin feels hydrated for 12 hours, I do feel like that my skin is starting to get hydrated at the moment when I first put it on, it just felt like I had foundation on my skin and it looked so matte, it looked so cakey as well and I didn't really like it much but it does feel pretty light on the skin as well it doesn't feel heavy or anything like that and it says that it's 100% velvet smooth perfection now I have to say that when I did put this on my skin I did feel that it was really nice and soft and smooth my skin felt amazing it just felt like baby butt skin it was absolutely incredible which I absolutely loved I loved the feel of it I did really like the look of it when I first put it on after I reapplied it again and it didn't look cakey I liked the look of it then so with my redness this didn't cover it up completely it is a medium coverage foundation 
foundation and you couldn't build it up either. I did notice that when I tried to build it up, it looked like a right cake fest. It pretty much took off the foundation where I put it on and all you could see was redness on there and it just didn't look very good at all. So if you do want to have a foundation that is full coverage or one that you can build up to full coverage, this is not the best one for you. I also noticed that the first time that I put this on, I did use my mattifying moisturiser and that's because I do get super oily and I noticed that it did not go on my skin very well. It looked very, very cakey and it just looks horrible wherever I put it on my skin. So when I took this off, I did just put on a dry to very dry skin moisturiser that I always use, which is the Garnier Moisture Match one and it worked really, really well after that and I only put the matte moisturiser on my forehead so I don't get super oily. So I'm not really sure if this is gonna be good for all you guys out there who have very oily skin. For me, I do have a very oily T-zone. It worked pretty well on my forehead, but then on my nose, it just didn't work out very well. And the redness, if you have a lot of redness, I don't know if this is going to be good enough for you. I do really like the Estee Lauder Double Wear and also the Kat Von D foundation if you do have redness. And also the L'Oreal 24 Hour Matte Foundation that covers up my redness very, very quickly and it's very buildable as well. Another thing that I noticed about this foundation is that it does accentuate my pores on my cheeks. And I did notice that they were quite big. But if you do have very large pores and you want to try this out, definitely put a pore filling primer on it because it is going to make your pores look huge. And with the wear time, I think it's done pretty well to last eight hours. I mean, it doesn't look to the point where I could go out and wear my foundation like this. If I go out for dinner or anything like that, I wouldn't be comfortable with wearing a foundation that looks like this and going out. But it does look pretty good after the eight hour mark. I have to say, it does look good and it has lasted quite a long time. And like I said, I did feel like I was going to have the same experience as I did with the NYX foundation, which was not good. I really didn't like that. And after about five hours, I actually took that foundation off because I was super oily and it just did not work and it pretty much all came off anyway. I will link that first impression down below for you so you can check that one out. But if you do have normal skin, I feel like it's probably going to last pretty much all day on you as well because I do have very oily skin on certain areas of my face and it's pretty much came off on there but if you do have normal skin, it's probably going to work really well on you. So now I'm going to have a quick look at the two different sides of my face to see which one lasts longer, if it's the prime side or if it's the non-prime side. So this side of my face had the primer on and this side didn't. And I have to say that the side that had the primer on has actually done worse than the side that didn't have the primer on. As you can see, the side that didn't have the primer on, I do have a little bit of redness and also my blush is on there as well. And then this side, which had the primer on, has actually done really, really bad. It's pretty much all come off on this side and you can see all my blemishes peeking through and all the redness. So and I have to say that next time I use this foundation, I'm not going to use my primer because it looks like it works better when you don't use primer. So I'm going to have a little play around with the foundation for a little while and see how I can make it look better and how I can make it last longer as well. I think next time I'm not going to use my Rimmel Stay Matte Primer because it just didn't really work, as you can see. I pretty much have no foundation on this side of my face. So I'm just going to try it out and see how I can make it look better. And then I'll probably come back and do a full review for you very, very soon. So this is my final first impression of the Maybelline Dream Velvet Foundation. And if you've tried this out and if you like it or if you don't, just comment down below to let me know your thoughts on it. And make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in my next video, guys. Bye!